Hello guys, in shit gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today, we have a different scenario. Um, well, mostly because I don't have that scenario ready because I'm changing some things in the computers and so on. So I actually kind of had to make a shift here and I wanted to record outside, but outside is still well. It's cold and it was raining some time ago. So, I mean, it just won't work. Everything just works. Everything just works. Everything just works. It just works. Everything just works. But anyway, as for today's video, we have the review of the Adrenaline 24.5.1 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 24 is the year 2024, 5 is the month May, and 1 is the revision in that same month, so the first revision of May. And I can tell you right away that I'm glad for these drivers to come, obviously, because I, I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima and these drivers do increase the performance, I can let you know right away. But at the same time, I'm kind of disappointed because I was expecting, let's say, uh, anti-lag plus, I was expecting some newer things and yeah, nothing. I was even waiting for anti-lag plus in order to make my How to Adrenaline video of 2024, but I guess I'll just make it. Uh, otherwise, I'll be doing the, the video in the end of 2024 when anti Like Plus is released. <laughs> by, by the way, it's going. Anyway, as usual, let's start with the release notes, but first lay an eye on today's sponsor in order to help the channel, if you want. Today's sponsor is Isis with Voice Wave. Oh! Voice Wave is an AI voice changer that allows you to change your voice in real time, being it during streaming or simply when voice chatting with your friends. Look. Pass me the salt. It also includes background noise reduction and offers you the ability to record, modify and export your voice to MP3 files. And on top of this, you also have access to the most popular sound effects around. Get Voice Wave right now for free and later upgrade to the Pro version according to your needs. So, release notes. Firstly, we have new feature highlights with new game support for Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, Senua Saga, Hellblade 2, and F1 2024. And it is actually very good that we have already support for Senua Saga, Hellblade 2. The game will just be released in like a few days, maybe four or five days. Uh, and yet we have Ghost of Tsushima drivers today. Well, we had it. We had them yesterday for the game that was released today. And now we have support for Senua Saga, Hellblade 2 as well, which is a very, very good thing in my opinion. AMD worked well here. As for the expanded Hypertoon Games support, if you don't know what Hypertoon Games, they are basically games that are ready to work with HyperRx with all features enabled at the same time, just with one click, and they will enable uh, they will enable FSR inside the game and so on. Basically, a specially tuned games with HyperRx settings. And the first game is Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, already with the Hypertoon support. Then we have Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition, already added. Then we have Starfield and then The Last of Us Part 1. After that, we have a note saying click here for more information regarding HyperRx. Enable HyperRx and get an instant boost in performance of up to 136% on, on the Radeon RX 7600 XT GPU across games like Baldur's Gate 3, F1 23, Resident Evil 4 and more. And the same then applies to the 8700G APU. The HyperRx gives you more performance because you're using Radeon Boost, Radeon Super Resolution or FSR, so it's normal that it gives you more performance. It is nothing spectacular. It is just a mix of several technologies put together inside the same setting. But well, it is what it is. And now we have an important scenario for AI users. AI on AMD. The latest version of AMD Software Adrenaline Edition ensures optimal support and performance, providing the most refined enhancements and optimizations for best user experience. AMD Software can power AI functionality included in leading ISV applications, Content creators can rely on AMD software to accelerate AI-enhanced features in many content creation apps, including Adobe Creative Cloud, Blender, DaVinci Resolve, Topaz Photo and Video AI, and many more. Click here for more information. And by the way, I tested these drivers in some AI applications like the Pro Cyan kits, which actually use lots of, uh, of AI things, image generation um, and other AI-related tasks. 
and sincerely, I haven't tested, I believe, in the, in the budget benchmark with Premiere 2024, and I did not see any difference. I haven't tested Blender, by the way, I also tested Blender and with Open Data 4.1.0, and I did not see any difference. But maybe we need to install uh, anything or something outside of these drivers in order to make it work as well. I don't really know. I'm not expert in the, in the area, so I will not speak about what I don't know. But I tested it normally with just the drivers and the improvement was basically none. Maybe it is specific to some application or updates. AI development on Radeon. AMD software enables lower level AI functionality, sorry, with popular frameworks like PyTorch and ONNX runtime on Linux, enabling developers, enthusiasts, and researchers to work with AI on selected Radeon 7000 series desktop GPUs. Click here for more information. Once again, I'm not really into this, so I don't know if we need uh, an additional, an additional something, an additional something to make it work properly, I don't really know. If you know this, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know because I'm always looking forward to improve and learn. Now the fixed issues and improvements. Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing World of Warcraft or World of Warcraft Classic on RDNA 3 series graphics products. And this is a bug that was actually tormenting people for quite a lot of time. By the way, most people that think that they have issues with World of Warcraft, some of them are not related to the GPU and most people just have CPU and RAM instability and since that game uses, uh, well, it doesn't use a lot of CPU and, and RAM but it, it sure is dependent on CPU and, RAM in, uh, and CPU and RAM in terms of performance and so on. So most people might have CPU or RAM instabilities and they think the issue is the GPU and isn't. But it is for sure that we do have some AMD issues in World of Warcraft. So it's a mixed bag, I guess. Intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing Overwatch 2 on Raiden RX 5000 series graphics products, another fix. Intermittent stutter immediately after alt tab with performance metrics overlay enabled. And this is another fix that some people were complaining about um, of that stutter after doing alt tab when they were using the overlay. I never had that issue because I don't use alt tab that much and at the same time I don't use AMD overlay for almost nothing. So I never, uh, I nev I never experienced such issue. But for people that were having that issue and they, they thought it was annoying as hell, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know if it was actually fixed with these drivers or not. Another one is texture flickering may be observed while playing Hitman Contracts, an older game. And the last one is corruption around certain water elements may be observed while playing Alan Wake 2 with Radeon Boost enabled, which is something that might happen with Radeon Boost. That's why I don't really use it, because in my opinion it is almost useless. Just use FSR and or frame generation and you're much better with it. And once again, since not everything is about fixed things, we also have some known issues. The first known issue is Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas may fail to launch. Hotfix pending verification. So it might not be long before AMD releases a patch. Black corruption may be observed while playing Alien Isolation on Radeon 7000 series graphics cards, which is a bummer. Corruption may be observed while playing Dying Light to Stay Human Reloaded Edition with Radeon Boost enabled. Users experiencing this issue are recommended to disable Radeon Boost as a temporary workaround, but I mean, nobody uses Radeon Boost. Intermittent in-game corruption might be observed while playing Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut with AMD Software Adrenaline Edition Record and Streaming and HDR enabled. So basically, if you're playing Ghost of Tsushima and you are recording or streaming and using HDR at the same time, you might have some issues. I personally don't use HDR that much uh, and I did record a bit and I had no issues, but it seems that it is just with HDR and recording. And this one is still here, Max Payne 1 and 2 may fail to launch on RDNA 3 series graphics products when anti-aliasing is enabled. And then we have another one, AMD Adrenaline Edition performance metrics may intermittently fail to update while playing Helldivers 2, resolution targeted for the 24.6.1, so maybe one or two drivers after this one, which is not that bad actually. And the last one is audio and video may intermittently become out of sync while recording using AV1 codec in AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, resolution targeted for the quarter three. 
And once again, this is uh, this issue of the AV1 codec is more or less like the issue with um, with a black screen corruption and so on that we had before um, when enable enhanced sync. Uh, this is kind of the greatest hits of AMD. <laughs> <laughs> and well, now we are in that part where I actually show you the things that I found and the issues and uh, basically the goods and the bads that I found with these drivers. And I have some goods and well, at least one bad thing uh, that wasn't fixed yet. But let's firstly go into the Ghost of Tsushima's performance and see how it improved from the 24.4.1 drivers to the 24.5.1, which are these ones, because it did improve. Let's watch. The Mongol Empire is invading our home. They are brutal. Relentless. Unstoppable. We are 80 samurai against an army fighting to slow the invasion. Today, I die for my people. There must be thousands of them. We will face death and defend our home. Defending our home. They are brutal. Relentless. Unstoppable. We are 80 samurai against an army fighting to slow the invasion. Today, I die for my people. There must be thousands of them. We will face death and defend our home. Tradition. The Mongol Empire is invading our home. Unstoppable. We are 80 samurai against an army fighting to slow the invasion. Today, I die for my people. There must be thousands of them. And as you saw, if you want to play Ghost of Tsushima on your PC and your running an AMD card, you definitely want these drivers to improve the performance because it will not only run better in terms of averages, but the 1% lows, basically the smoothness of the gameplay, will increase or will improve as well. For example, in the 7800 XT, we had around 16% improvement in that scenario. Then on the, on the 60... On the 6750 XT, sorry, we had around 12% increase, and even on the 7900 XT, we had around 7% increase, and I believe that the increase will be will be higher uh, if we were testing at 4K, for example, but still, I don't really know. But it is there, the improvements are there, and is definitely a good thing. Now, as for the goods and bads, it is this, the performance increase uh, with Ghost of Tsushima, and then I found that the games overall felt a bit smoother, so less stutters here and there. Uh, the overall performance were more or less was more or less the same. Sorry about my English. It kind of felt smoother when loading shaders here and there, so it is a good thing in my opinion. I, I can't just show it to you, but it's just what I felt. Maybe it's just placebo effect or something, but that's what I felt. Now, as for the bad things, yeah. Well, this is not bad per se, it's just a thing that I found, that when using OC profiles from the previous version, basically overclocking or undervolting profiles, um, saved with the previous driver versions, well, in some cards I had issues and I actually had to manually insert the values uh, one by one and save a new file with that driver version and then it just worked. It just worked. So it is not about uh, having to increase the voltage because these drivers are different. No, I simply had to make exactly the same values and make a new file with that driver. Uh, it is what it is. It happened, for example, with the 7600 XT that crashed with the previous 
with a previous profile that I had, so I had to create a new one with the same exact values, and it happened as well for the 7800 XT. It didn't happen for the 7900 XT, but it did happen for these two cards, so it's a... Uh, hit or miss, I guess. As for the bad thing that I found, it is basically that HDR, that HDR issue that I have, or that I had, still happens. Basically, when I disconnect the monitor or just turn it off and then I'm going to turn it on again, I have kind of a brightness shifting when using the browser or when playing games or even when just watching some videos on YouTube. The brightness will just go bananas and I kind of have to disconnect the monitor or connect it again enable HDR and disable it once again or just press Ctrl plus Shift plus Windows plus B keys at the same time uh, and it will kind of restart the, the, the driver and it will make it work perfectly after that but it happens each time I, I turn off the monitor and turn it on again it just happens and I have to continuously make the Ctrl Shift Windows B key in order to restart the driver, but I mean it takes just one second. It is not a deal breaker It is just annoying and that's basically what I found everything apart from this works fine in my experience But as usual if you found anything besides this if you have some issues leave them in the comment section because uh, Well, I want to know the community wants to know and the AMD team that sometimes also Reads the comments the comment section of my videos and watch my videos Maybe they want to see as well in order to fix some issues, but I guess it is what it is We have some fixed issues some very important fixed issues regarding World of Warcraft We will have soon some fixes as well in terms of Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas Not starting with the AMD GPUs and some more will come I believe and well guys That's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching Don't forget to hit like subscribe and share this video leave your like and leave your comment in the comment section once again just leave it it is very important it helps everyone literally everyone me the channel you guys the community amd everyone it's a win-win so don't forget to do it and yeah now i just ran out of battery so it means that i really really have to stop the video <laughs> thank you very much for watching guys and see you in the next one cheers The payphone was ringing. Somehow I knew the call was for me. Hello? Hello, Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this?